This schematic represents the circuits previously described. The field items are transmitters, transducers, and the junction box. The signal wires are connected to a multi-pair cable through a terminal strip in the field junction box. The multi-pair cable terminates at a terminal strip that is located inside a control center cubicle. We will quickly run through the typical loop again. This time, we will look at the hardware. The transmitter and the transducer signals are connected to a terminal board in the field junction box. The signals connect to a multi-pair cable. The multi-pair cable leaves the IJB and The same multi-pair cable terminates on a terminal strip located in a control center terminal cabinet. From here, the transmitter and the transducer signals are connected to the other items in the loop. The control center wiring also utilizes multi-pair cables. For instance, Multi-pair cables connect the computer and controller signals. The individual controller signals are connected to the computer signals at a terminal strip. Here is an actual example. This is the analog input section of a computer. Here is the multi-pair cable leaving the computer. The cable terminates in this cubicle. On this terminal strip. These are the multi-pair cable wires. And these wires, called jumpers, go to the individual controllers. Here is another example of an instrument loop. Locate the field items. The transmitter. The I to P. And the junction box. Locate the control center items. Cubicle A. Computer and the controller. Notice the three multi-pair cables. The cable that connects the controller to the terminal strip is called a cord set. The cord sets plug into the backs of the controllers. Here is the terminal strip where a cord set terminates. All the controller signals are routed through the cord set. The cord set wires are the wires on the left of the terminal block. Jumpers connect terminal strip number one signals to terminal strip number three signals. Jumpers also connect terminal strip number two signals to terminal strip number three signals. Before we study a specific loop, we will recap what we have learned. First, an electronic loop consists of several house and field items. Second, you must be able to find these loop items. You will have to use instrument location plans, building layouts, terminal cabinet arrangement drawings, panel layouts, and other pertinent engineering information. 
Third, you must be able to interpret loop diagrams, cable schedules, and other electrical drawings. Fourth, an electronic loop is nothing more than a series of electrical paths. An electrical path, the input signal for instance, begins in a controller. goes through a chord set, a jumper, a multi-pair cable, a two-wire cable, and then through a transmitter and back to the controller. Your job will be to sort out the wires and correctly establish the electrical paths. Now work exercise number two in your workbook. This is loop F302 the same loop diagram that you used in your workbook. The loop diagram is divided into field, terminal cabinets 3 and 4, instrument panel A, and computer. Also included in the loop diagram is a credenza. A credenza is a bank or bookcase of recorders. Before we install this loop, we must locate all the items included in the loop. The field items can be located by using an instrument location plan. Locate F302 transmitter. Locate F302 field indicator. The indicator is a current meter that is in the transmitter output current path. It gives the operator a field indication of the process variable. Locate FV302, the I to P transducer. Locate IJB307. The transmitter, indicator, and I to P are located between D430 and R9 at approximately 5 feet above grade. This is R9. Here is D430. The field items are between R9 and D430. Here are the field items. The transmitter. The I to P and the field indicator. Find the IJB. Also, find a major process item for a location reference. We are facing south, so IJB 307 is to the left of D 429. Now work exercise number three in your workbook. 